Well, hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of DC Today. I would say it's another reasonably boring day in the markets. The Dow ended up, it was up or flat most of the day. It ended up down 70 points, so just 0.19%. And then the S&P was exactly 20 basis points worse than that, down 0.39%. And the NASDAQ was exactly 20 basis points worse than that, down 0.59%. So um, all three market indices down a bit, kind of proportionally uh, worse from Dow to S&P to NASDAQ. Best performing sector today was utilities. It's generally, by the way, not going to be a great day in the market when utilities are the leader. But they were up a full 1.4%. And then energy was, again, the worst day in the market, down 1.6% with oil prices down over 4% on the day, closing below $70 in the uh, 69 plus change. The bond market rallying again, uh, the 10 year all the way down to 412 basis points, 4.12%, down five basis points today. So there has been a tiny bit of breakup lately here, just a matter of days of that correlation between stocks and bonds. You've had bonds continue to rally, Stocks have sort of sputtered a little bit, nothing severe, but uh, based on how tight the correlation has been and really how tight we kind of expect it to stay, it's at least noteworthy. In terms of economic data, uh, first, the European Central Bank, the ECB, um, the futures market is pricing in uh, six rate cuts for next year more severe than people are, are expecting the Fed to do, and they're expecting the ECB to start first. So 150 basis points theoretically coming out of the deposit rate at the um, European Central Bank. Of course, the futures market could be wrong, but that's what the market expectation is now, which is quite surprising. Um, the ADP private payrolls number came this morning, 103,000 new jobs in November, but 120,000 have been expected. The bulk of the slowdown we see is in leisure and hospitality, which had been utterly on fire uh, since the kind of post-COVID reopening now for a couple years. Other economic data today, the trade deficit came in at $64.3 billion, which was exactly in line with expectations. But I just do want to point out, exports are down on the year a little over 1%. Imports are up. Uh, I'm saying this backwards. Exports are up, imports are down year over year. Kevin McCarthy, former Speaker of the House, he did announce his resignation this morning, so he'll be leaving the House in Bakersfield, California. It's a reasonably safe red seat, but uh, Speaker McCarthy will be uh, headed out, not interested in staying in the Congress, if no longer the Speaker. Then the bank, the eight major bank CEOs all testified before the, si the Senate Finance and Banking Committee this morning and really hammered at this idea of Basel III level capital requirements. In other words, requiring the banks to hold more capital against their loans and against their, their assets, um, uh, just sort of a, a more conservative approach still than the ones they've already had, which have been dramatically tightened since financial crisis. And they made the argument that the additional cost has to be borne through a higher return and that higher return has to come from customers paying a lower deposit rate, receiving a higher mortgage rate, um, but that there would be some um, offset for to protect the net interest margin if there's going to have to be higher capital amounts held. I don't know that the Senate understands all this stuff. I thought that the banking CEOs did a good job today, but I think it's a big deal. I think that um, if they were to fully go forward to implement what has been recommended, uh, it could be uh, real problematic in terms of the plumbing of our financial system. It, it, that is to say, uh, financial markets moving, capital moving, um, and, and, and doing so a proper amounts of liquidity, lending, um, and appetite for borrowing, that there is a very good chance at a time when regional banks have already really gone to the sidelines uh, that, that if the big banks were to see some sort of slowdown because of stricter capital requirements, it, it could be uh, macroeconomically impactful. I don't know that it's going to happen, but today was a big step forward in making that case. That's, that's all we have today. You do have initial jobless claims coming tomorrow. The BLS uh, monthly jobs report will come on Friday. 
Uh, Brian Seitel is going to bring you DC today, tomorrow, as I'm in uh, just a, a kind of excessive load of client meetings tomorrow. Uh, but you'll enjoy hearing from Brian, and I'll enjoy being with you in the Dividend Cafe on Friday. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading the DC today. Mm -hmm.